This video is for you if you want to be an author too. What's up everyone? It's your boy Kyle Gray. Welcome back to my channel. In this space, I normally look at the intersection between all things magical and spiritual with my life's mission helping as many people get spiritually connected as humanly possible. And I do that through a number of different means. I've written eight books. I've created at this moment, I think, nine oracle decks and I've got three more on the way and one of the biggest questions I get is hey Kyle how do I become an author? I've been published since I was 24. I signed my first book deal when I was 23 and I think a lot of people have seen this journey of me you know becoming this published kid to you know this adult with a business and a team and all these books and, you know, selling hundreds of thousands of copies worldwide and go, well, maybe if he can do it, I can do it too. And I thought it'd be really helpful just to create a video, just giving you some places to start uh, this journey for yourself. So I genuinely believe that most people have a book inside of them. And I think it's important to say that this particular video is going to be centered on people in the kind of self-help, how-to, spirituality world. So if you want to write a book about spirituality, magic, some sort of healing modality, or some sort of self-help book, then this video is for you. To kind of give you a background on how I got published, I think it's important to say that I've been doing this since I was 15 years old, when I was 17 years old, I started my spiritual business doing angel readings and um, I called myself a spiritual consultant and I would do angel readings in people's houses. I'd go out, you know, five, six nights a week and do four to five readings each um, night and that's how I made my income. But during around that same time, I also really wanted to write about my ideas and my experiences with angels. And so what I started to do was I noticed in a lot of, at this time, a lot of spiritual magazines um, had these sections like, do you have a story? Um, write to us and we might publish it. And if we publish it, we'll pay you. I don't know, it was like 200 pounds or something along those lines. And so all these magazines, like they were called like Take a Break's Fate and Fortune, Vision Magazine, Soul and Spirit, Spirit and Destiny, Prediction Magazine, I wrote to them all. I would write to them saying, I'd really love to write an article about this. I'd really write, uh, love to write an article about that. And I would pitch all these different ideas at 17 years old to all these different magazines and to my surprise a lot of them would write back and say hey that would be great could you deliver 1500 words and we'll get back to you and so I would do that all the time and a lot of these magazines would then start publishing my little articles on you know how to connect with your guardian angel how to do this or how to do that or my life story. And then what I later found out is that newspapers actually scour these magazines for stories that they can cover in their big newspapers. So newspapers like News of the World, The Sun, The Scottish Sun, The Metro, um, The Daily Record, all these are all you know British Scottish uh, newspapers. All of their journalists for the women's features would scour these spiritual magazines looking for stories and a lot of them would be my articles and then these newspapers would reach out and they'd like to do a little piece on angels or psychic experiences or all these different things. So by the time I was 19, I had been in all these different newspapers. The Daily Mail named me as the youngest medium in the UK when I was 17 years old because they had found me through this magazine at the time called Vision Magazine who then offered me a column as a teenager to answer people's questions. So that's how I got started in 
journalism and writing because I was submitting articles to all these different magazines and newspapers, which would then kind of build up my portfolio as a writer. When I was around 20, yeah, 20, the Sun newspaper approached me and said, hey, we're looking for a new um, columnist of a psychic nature. And then after a series of interviews, uh, was given the job as the angel whisperer for the Scottish Sun. From the ages of 20 to 25, I wrote at the Scottish Sun with a newspaper column every single Tuesday. The first week I was there, I received over 5,000 handwritten letters of people asking me questions that I could ask their angels. Now, why is all of this important? I think a lot of people just think I've maybe came out of a puff of smoke and landed with a publishing deal. But the truth was, before I got published, I had from the age of 17 to 23 of newspaper articles, magazine features, all these different things under my belt. But not only that, around that same time, I also had a Facebook page. Um, no, I started with a MySpace page, then I had a Bebo one, and then I had a Twitter page, and then I had a Facebook page, and these were all building up me sharing my angels, angel readings, angel scopes, all these different things to get myself out of there. So by the time I was 23, I was then approached by a literary agent who was looking for new talent to take on to help them shop their book ideas. And that's exactly what happened to me. I met this agent who came with a ghostwriter and then we worked together on pitching my first book um, to different publishers. And we'd pub we had submitted to HarperCollins and um, that fell through and I suggested Hay House, which was my dream publisher, and they didn't pay that much money. So I made an agreement that the agent and the uh, ghostwriter that I had to help me write my first book um, could take the larger sum of the money so that I could um, get the deal because I just wanted to be there. But then for my second book, I didn't work with the ghostwriter um, I just worked with the agent and I wrote my own book because I knew I was more than capable. It was just, it was my way in at the time. So I think if you want to be published, I think the first thing you really need to bring into your awareness is, do I have an expertise in what I want to write about? Do I already have a group of people that are willing to listen to my expertise on this subject and can I demonstrate that to the general public? If you don't necessarily have any followers on any social media platforms, if you don't have um, any experience writing articles, and it doesn't have to be print newspapers now, we've got blogs and substacks and digital magazines and all these things. If you don't have any of that experience yet, my recommendation to you would be to get it. It might be your own blogs. It might be submitting articles to digital magazines or newspapers. But once you get a few things published, it's going to be easier for you to be publishing a book because you've got that experience. You're working with editors. You're hearing feedback on your writing. And then, you know, you're also building up a rapport with the general public. All of that is essential stuff to have before you go for a publishing deal. I think what a lot of people are doing is they're just sending a random cold email to a publisher that they've never met or been introduced to in their life. They've got no social media following, no presence online, no website, no Wikipedia, none of this stuff exists about you and you're just cold shooting in the dark hoping to get a publishing deal. So the other thing I recommend you do is also look at some of the books that you love and, you know, look up the publisher. So, you know, one of my favorite books ever is Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. It's the story of Nike. Um, and it's published by Simon & Schuster, right? So if you look 
in your bookshelf at your favorite book and you'll see who, who the publisher is, you can go to that publisher's website like Simon & Schuster. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the main page of every publisher's website, you'll see a word that says submissions. And this is usually a clickable link and if you click that submissions link, it will tell you everything that you need to know to submit a proposal for your book. Most publishers will not accept uh, a proposal unless you're represented by an agent. So really important stuff to know. So that means you can't just cold hard submit a proposal to any publisher at any time. You need representation who will then submit on your behalf to the publisher, who will then negotiate with the publisher a deal should you be successful in doing so. So I think all of that's just a really important piece of information to know. There are loopholes around this though, especially these days, and that would be, for example, Hay House, my publisher, have this um, membership, I think it's called like Authorpreneur, and it's um, a membership where you can join and so many people every year win a publishing deal. So that's a quick way in. Um, they also do a writer's workshop where they do it in the US, the UK, I think they might do it in Australia as well, where you can go to the workshop and every person who goes to the workshop can uh, issue a proposal for a book concept and then um, win a publishing deal. So I think that's really important stuff to, to note. Now, you're hearing me speak about proposals a lot here. And a proposal is, is a, a kind of culmination of a synopsis of your book, a plan for your book, um, a demonstration of your writing capacity, along with your bio, and also included in there will be your statistics of social media reach, newsletter numbers, and also your marketing plan, included with endorsements of your work, and also anyone that is willing to support your book, who's in the public eye, or um, has a high reach on their social media channels. So all of that is what's inside a proposal. It's usually about 5,000 to 10,000 words, which you then submit to the publisher. Because I think a lot of people write an entire book and then they hand in the 70,000 word draft to a publisher. And let's be honest, they do not have enough time to read 70,000 words for the hundreds, maybe even thousands of proposals that are sent across their desk every single week. So I think it's essential for you to know when you're wanting to get published that it's a proposal that you need to submit and that has all this key information about your expertise and then that can maybe lead you to getting a book deal. So keep all of that in mind. And, and I know this might feel like a lot. And I think it's important for people like me to do videos like this to help you know that it really is a lot. Publishing a book is a lot of work. And the key thing to know is that as an author, you are individually responsible for the marketing of your own work. There is usually a zero budget for marketing on any book. So the success of your book being published and the success of your book after being published is all on you. If you don't have a platform, a social media following, a community of people that are willing to back it now, it's really going to feel challenging um, for you when you put your book out there. So, you know, that's something to take into consideration. The reason for the success of my first book was I already had 10,000 followers on Facebook and that was years ago, you know, 13 years ago. 
I was already a columnist in The Sun who agreed to market my book to their followers. I was in The Sun, the Scottish Sun, the news of the world. But not only that, because I was a columnist in that newspaper, I also was able to get on national television. So I was on a TV show called This Morning. All the same week of my book being published. So I had the followers, I had the TV, I had the newspaper articles, and then I also had this thing called Angel Club, which was my monthly meeting where I would do angel readings for people in the audience and do inspirational uh, talks on different things relating to the angels and see all the people that came to my events. Sometimes it'd be like 300 people every month. They would all buy three copies each. That's 900 books. Um of all my work to share it with their friends and share it with their family. And that started to help the numbers creep up and creep up and creep up. And then that helped build my social media following and, you know, all these different things. So you really do require a foundation to get published. You need to have an expertise. You need to have endorsements. You need to have feedback, reviews, most likely experience in writing and sharing articles. And then if you've got all of that, then there's a good chance that you can go to an agent. The agent will then look at your portfolio and say, oh, you've done all this, brilliant. Yes, I'd love to represent you. If you can get that, then you create your concept and your proposal with the agent and you can work with a writing coach to do all of that. Then if you do all of that, you can then propose it to a certain amount of publishers, if your publisher then agrees to publish your book, they will then buy the rights to your book and they'll give you a thing called an advance. And the advance is an advance payment. And that advance payment is enough money for you usually to take a little bit of time off to write the book and they'll see what they need from you. Once you get that, you usually get some money up front, some money halfway and some money on delivery and then they publish your book and it usually takes another year or two before that happens. And then based on the percentages that your agent has negotiated, all of the income of your book has to surpass that fee that they gave you on the advance first before you start to make income on your book. And most publishers are usually working between eight and 15 to 17 and a half percent of every book. I don't think I know anyone that's on anything more than 15 percent of the income of their book. So if you buy a book from your favorite author, like me buying Phil Knight's book, Shoe Dog, it's $9.99, there's a good chance that he's probably getting 15 percent of however much this book sold at market price that day. So he's getting 15 percent of that. So you have to sell tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of books before you really start to make a really juicy income. And that's why most other authors are doing speaking engagements, have online courses, um, you know, see clients one-on-one and all these different things because we're most likely only making 8 to 15% of however much the book sold. Now, if you buy books on Amazon, you'll see that it might say 10 on the back, but it's only selling for four. So it's the 15% of the four that's coming in to their um, money. And that 15% equates up to the advance that has to be paid up before you make an income. So this is all the things that you should know about the publishing world before you do it. It's not for the faint hearted. And I do wish it was more accessible for more people. And I, I do know that it's a lot of privilege that I have personally to have gotten to where I've gotten today. There is no doubt that this is privilege. There is no doubt. And I know that the world is, you know, the publishing world is kind of being infiltrated to be more um, accepting, approachable and diverse. And that's conversations I'm having a lot from my own experience, you know, more people need to be in this world. But that's how it's been kept and this is how it's been coveted for a very long time. And it is changing, it is changing. But nowadays, it's not really about your writing capacity, it's more about how many followers you have online and if you can sell a product to them. That really is what it is. It's not about being a great writer anymore. 
Um, so I think it's important just to take all of this into consideration. If you're thinking about writing a book, check into everything that I've shared. I'm also going to put below links to some of the things that I mentioned here, uh, some books that I would say are really helpful for putting a proposal together and then you can look into it and then decide if this is for you or not. But if all else fails, the most important thing I can say is you can always self-publish and that'll be 100% of your income. But you need to be able to sell a book. It's not just about writing it. You have to do the work afterwards as well. I hope this was helpful to you and I hope it helps you on your journey. I'll see you in the next one.